All-Star Challenge national team and was selected from thousands of students to represent the Honda Motor Company in the national as Amon appeared in the several issues of Ebony, Essence, Black Enterprise, and the Crisis Magazine. Amon is the author of the book, Check This Out, World Mysteries and Untold Histories. Examples of some available topics include, Are We Alone? Have Beings from the Other Planet Visit Earth? Proof of Ancient Sting, What Traveling Teaches You, Check This Out, Coffee Life, Getting in the Graduating, The Importance of Learning Languages, and Parenting, Raising Productive Children. So further ado, this is a mom. research that I was doing, just things I was interested in, like life on earth is where it started with me. I was looking at just where life existed, everywhere on this planet, and just led me into looking at other things and ended up just having a bunch of information that I had collected and my mother suggested that I put it into a book. So that's where the book started. Um, so I'm not going to say that I'm an expert on any of this, but I am a student of all of it. Um, if anybody has questions while I'm going through, please ask while I'm doing it. I feel like it's easier to answer something as soon as you think of it than having to wait till the end. Alrighty. So basically what I found was that life exists everywhere on Earth. Um, there's pretty much no place on Earth where you cannot find life in some form or shape. Um, no matter where you look in rocks, in the deserts, in lava tubes, all over the planet, there's some form of life. So we have um, extremophiles, which are yes. So um, the extremophiles are those types of organisms that live in places that people previously thought were unable to be inhabited by anything. So they found them in toxic waste and acid. They found little things living in there. Um, rocks, lava nuts. Uh, it's a bunch of movies that actually have information about these things and they put a lot of information in movies, which they make it look like it's all fiction, but it's based on a lot of scientific fact. Um, so these are just some of the types of extremophiles. Um, they have this type here, which is an acetophile, which can be found in really low pH stuff, so like acids that would burn up pretty much everything. They found life in those. <coughs> they found life in salt environments, life that pretty much had no oxygen and still was able to grow. Um, they found them in the rocks, out in the desert, extremely hot environments, um, super cold places. So pretty much anywhere, life will find a way. So the universe is pretty much unimaginable. Like there is no number or even the extent or where we can possibly think of a number which can count all the planets or even solar systems that are out there. 
the universe can also be compared to God. It's everything, all things that are. Um, and I say, does the universe have a consciousness? It might. Because stars do have a heartbeat, basically. So they have a rhythm, like the planets all have a actual rhythm that you can follow. So this picture of the universe I really liked because this was from the Hubble. And they took one star that was real far away, one little dot, and blew it up and saw this. So like one little tiny speck showed them countless galaxies that were in one little dot of light. Um, yes, ma'am. So it might be helpful to, to share one of the things we've talked about is that when you talk about how many could that be, more than all the sand in all of the world, which it's like, can you imagine that? Every right. single grain of sand doesn't even compare to how many galaxies there are. And there's unknown amounts of planets in each of those galaxies, the solar systems. So is, that, oh, yep. is that where the term pixel came from? I'm not sure. It's possible. Because I know it was like, they were using, that's how they like kind of like see in the outer space, like they look at, uh, I, I can't even like, you know, really begin to describe it, but it, it's a measurement of seeing something that's not even really there. Yeah, I think it's like an F-stop on a camera, the old F-stop, was it, to how, uh, I guess it's how much light. Yeah, yeah, it's, like, yeah it's like a reflection or something like that. And yeah, they can say light. that that's a, yeah. How much you can magnify it mm -hmm. and still keep it clear. Yeah, it might be where they came from. Like a Cepheid variable or something like that. It's possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I was looking at planets with solar system just in our solar system and planets that have water. And I actually just read this yesterday. It said there's 23 bodies in our solar system alone that they know of that they found water. So just a couple of them are real close, like the moon. There's water on Mars. They're saying they see like streams in the summer. There's streams coming down mountains. Um, Europa is a real famous one. That's one that scientists are really big on because from what they can tell, it's a planet of water. It's basically an ocean world. Um, Callisto is another one that's supposed to have water on the surface. Um, Venus is supposed to have water as a vapor. So they haven't found any actual liquid water, but there are traces of water in the atmosphere. So would ice count? Yes. Okay. So yeah, they count ice. Right. So you say Europa. Now I know some history that Europa was a black queen that Europe was named after. Um, does that have any relation to to this? To uh, Jupiter? Yeah, I didn't actually see that they said it was named after her, mm -hmm. but most likely. Right. Yep. They do love to use our names for name and stuff. Mm -hmm. yep. So yeah, just have some pictures of like the moon where they found a lot of frozen water on the moon. You know, especially on the dark side where it never sees the sun, a lot of pockets like craters have ice in them. And so they're looking at going there and being able to use the ice to make liquid water. Yes. Do you have an idea or a knowledgeable of how everything started, like with our planets, like related to the Big Bang Theory? Oh, not really. Mm -hmm. You say it was a Big Bang and then dust and things accumulated and through heat and pressure condensed back into planets. I'm not right. sure. <laughs> yep. Venus, which pretty much looks like you can't see it. It's supposed to have a thick atmosphere, so they can't see what's on the surface. 
So there, they think there is a physical surface at so. all. Yeah, it's terrestrial. Yep. Well, because of the atmosphere, they have to send probes, I guess, onto the surface, which I haven't really heard too much about it. Um, it's hydrogen, isn't it? Um, I'm not sure. <clears throat> I think there's acid there too. Acids, because I know there's a mixture of chemicals in the atmosphere. Yeah, and all the elements. Yeah, yeah. Different yeah. elements are in there. The Mars. I like this picture from NASA because it shows the snow capped um, poles, which are pretty evident of water. And the world belt, that's the one they really like. That's the moon of Jupiter? Um, yes. Okay. Yep, that's the one that's ice covered, but they think the all underneath there is an ocean. And they're saying there's certain pockets that are thin because they've seen like plumes of water spraying off the planet. What are they like, um, strings and what's that? Um, from what I read, it's supposed to be, um, cracks. And yeah, it, cracks. Uh, why they're red, I'm not sure. But yeah, they're supposed to be cracks from the ice shifting. It might be the thermals under the water. True. Could be something driving around on the surface. Yeah. Do they know how like how shallow the water is? Or they don't know how thick the ice is. But um, I think from what I read it was like I can remember. It's like maybe I wanna say like six hundred meters thick. That's what their guess was. And what is a meter? A meter is three feet. Times that. So, like, so about, about half a mile. It's roughly give or take. Yeah. <clears throat> but I always wonder how they came up with these numbers. I mean, I guess just looking at it, we try to get densities from the light reflecting. Yeah, the light. Yep. So, spectroscope. Mm -hmm. Which I don't know about. Due to energy inside, radiation could change mm -hmm. how you get an image back. So I figure it's all guessing until we get there. I like this picture of Callista because I felt like those look like lights to me all over the surface of the planet. So the planet is. What? Like the foundation and like... It's dark. It's okay, supposed to be like dark, dark red. Okay. Mm -hmm. But there's all these light spots, <clears throat> which I haven't found an explanation for yet. You, you know they have the, um, the picture with the sun being the first planet and then somewhere along the lines you have like Pluto, Venus, mm -hmm. Earth. I've never seen those two, the Colosito and the Europe I never seen those in like the list. They usually don't add those because um, of moons. Okay. So they usually only show the major planets. Okay. They show our moon. Yeah. Yes, for some reason, but yeah, they don't show like Mars moons, yeah. or Jupiter, or Saturn's moons. So, but yeah, these are moons of. I think Callisto is the moon of. Is it Jupiter? Jupiter. Yeah, Jupiter. Yeah, how how big are those moons? Um, like how big is Jupiter's moons compared to? To Earth. Like to our moon, yeah. Um, or, or yeah, or to Earth. So I mean, I'm, it couldn't be that big. They're smaller than the moon. Moon. Yeah. Earth. They're, um, I actually had a picture somewhere, I don't know if I brought it with me, of like the comparison of the different moons and planets to Earth. Um, but yeah, these are smaller than Earth is. They are, I believe, roughly our moon size. Do they know if there's like life like human, how we are human on this earth, on uh, any of the other planets? They're telling us no. Okay. They're telling us they don't think there's 
any intelligent life, mm -hmm. but there might be like microscopic life yeah. because they found water. So mm -hmm. pretty much, it's hard to deny that there's some form of life if they found water. Right. So, but they're not admitting that they found any intelligent life or civilization. Even though I did read about a um, city on Mars that was supposedly found um, called Cydonia. How do you spell that? Um, it's uh, C Y D O N A, I think that's it. N A? Yes. Cydonia. N I A. No, sorry. Because that was supposed to be near where they said they found the face on Mars, and they said it wasn't a face on Mars. Mm -hmm. But then there were pictures of like rock formations that looked like pyramids near it. And so that's supposed to be one. And from reading like some ancient texts, um, the Sumerians said that they had bases other places. And that one was Mars. So I definitely think there's civilizations on these other planets. Mm. So here are some exoplanets, just a couple of them. Um, Kepler 22b was the first confirmed planet that they found in a habitable zone. So it's the right distance from the sun where we could survive. So it's pretty much all just based on us and the definition of life that we know of, that we're used to. Um, Gliese, that was actually in a movie, Battleship, where they made a whole movie about, they sent a radio message to this planet to see if there was any life there because it looks like Earth. And so in the movie, these aliens come to Earth and then they fight them. But that is an actual planet that has what looks like water, vegetation, and looks like Earth, pretty much. Where, where is it? Um, it's far away. Um, let me see. Actually, let me get to the next slide. So, yeah, at least I don't have the distance on them. So this is actually some of these planets and then their size compared to Earth, which is there. So, like Gliese, Kepler are far larger than Earth is. And there's actually, Gliese is a system, and they have a bunch of planets in there. There's what, one, two, three, four, five, six, that look like they're habitable. And then Kepler was another one where they had a couple planets. Different solar systems, I'm saying. Different solar systems. These are two solar systems. Uh, Gliese was one solar system, and Kepler was another solar system. And in the Gliese solar system, they found a couple planets, and in Kepler, they found some more planets, and they all look like they're habitable. <laughs> They're finding more. They just, from what I last saw, I think they said um, NASA on their website saying they found almost 2,000 planets that were Earth like, exoplanets. Alright, so now onto some unexplained structures. Um, sites all over the world that science still isn't able to explain how they were built, constructed, or anything. Probably the most famous pyramids in Giza. Um, these are probably my second favorite ones. Like my favorite fact about this one is that these pyramids are at the center of all the land mass in the world. So if you took all the land and squished it together, the pyramids would be right at the middle mm -hmm. of all of it. Um, which is a feat you cannot do without being able to survey the entire planet. Like, you have to be able to know where all the land on Earth is 
in order to be able to put that together. Um, question. Yes. Is that in line with Orion's belt too? The it does. Okay. Yes. Um, and actually, the dates that they said these were built, um, at that time, they would not have lined up with um, Orion's belt. And it actually, at the time, they would have perfectly lined up, I think, was closer to like 40,000 years ago. They say, I think they said the Earth was in, was transitioning out of Leo going into Virgo. At that time? Yeah, I think they say that's why the Sphinx or the Haru on Keti is a lion and then it goes into a goddess because Virgo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know what the correlation is with that. Yeah. I'm looking into that one myself. Go ahead. Yeah. So it's just a few facts, like the largest stones were, that they say were 800 tons, and they were carried 500 miles from where they were cut. So they had some technology where they could cut stones and they move them 500 miles away. Mm. Um, it's at the center of all landmass, and it's actually an eight-sided pyramid that can only be seen at certain times of the year. Mm. Um, or from overhead. From overhead. But it's still, I think, only at the equinoxes mm -hmm. where you can see the shadows. The shadows. Of yeah. the actual eight sides. <clears throat> you can see them. Yep. Mm -hmm. Another one um, were the Colossi of Memna, which were giant structures, over a thousand tons each. And these were carried over land. Because they said the stones from the pyramid were carried down the Nile and then erected. While these were too big to put on a ship. And so they were carried over land the whole way to get to these sites. And we still have technology that can do that today. At least not that they're telling us about. So yeah, they're located west of Luxor. Um, they're supposed to be statues of uh, Amenhotep III, and they're estimated at 720 tons. Another one is the unfinished obelisk, or Tekken, um, and that's in Aswan. It was not finished, but this would have been the largest anywhere that they found. Um, there's not really too much of why they left it and didn't finish it. Um, but most of the other ones were taken by Europeans, uh, taken all over the place. But uh, this was a pretty cool one. This one was supposed to weigh roughly um, 1,200 tons. Stonehenge, which is another famous site, um, which has actually been dated older than was thought originally, uh, which would have put it probably in a time when, anyway, when black people inhabited the area. And so this is another ancient structure built by Africans who would travel over there and left their marks. You know, the heaviest stones were 25 tons and they were moved about 20 miles. I think most of these stones were moved through a type of meditation, which is my theory, by utilizing magnetic energy and changing polarity so that they levitated off the ground and float wherever they wanted them to go. Peru was another site where they had a bunch of drawings all over the landscape, <coughs> which are pretty famous, and they can only be seen from the sky, which again suggests flight. 
one of my favorites. A little space man. It's like as you fly in, they say that's what you see as you fly towards the landscape from the ocean. See this little figure like wave it at you. Saxoyaman in Peru, giant stone structures. Just like the pyramids, they put them together without using mortar or anything to hold them together. They're too tight for a piece of paper or a razor blade to fit between. And this area is actually, um, has a lot of earthquakes. And yet, these have been standing for thousands of years yeah. and there's no <clears throat> explanation on how this was done. <coughs> Another site, Oyantan um, Tambo, which is pretty close to like the Nazca Lines and Saxoyaman, Machu Picchu, these are all like in pretty much the same area. This one I like because it's up on a mountain and they have like a whole complex there. These are just the largest stones that were found. This, um, I think 3,000 feet above sea level where they built this. So like the archeologists who like to use the, the rolling tree theory doesn't work because it's on a mountain and that high up there's no trees. It's just little shrubs and grass and so there's a lost 